seeing a case from principal stresses and strains and the case is member subjected to a direct stress in one plane so here a member a rectangular uh, member is subjected to a direct stress uh, in one plane only so in this case our aim is to find out uh, uh, normal and shear stresses in the oblique section means a section which is making some angle with this uh, normal cross section so on this section we have to find out the normal and shear stresses this will helps in uh, understanding the principal stresses and strains uh, in a member uh, or in, uh, in a strained uh, component when it is acted upon by uh, two direct stresses and uh, uh, and also with one uh, shear stress so for this this uh, uh, cases will help and here this is the first case in this uh, uh, principal stresses and strain topic so here only a component is subjected to only uh, one direct stress so here we are taking a sigma x or you can say uh, simply sigma also so it is acting uh, normal to this cross section so our aim is to find out uh, 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 normal and shear stresses on the oblique section so suppose if you see uh, sigma or sigma x is a i have taken the x because i have taken in x direction you can take simply sigma also so it has sigma is a direct stress acting perpendicular to this uh, uh, section so this is uh, this will be anyway it, it is inclined to this uh, uh, section oblique section which is fc we have taken here and uh, it is the oblique section is making angle theta with this uh, normal uh, cross section of this member that is uh, with bc and ef so if you if you see this is theta so this is also theta alternate angles so if you take this is a sigma x uh, acting uh, on perpendicular to the bc and it is with some angle with this fc so and if you take it is sigma x and this is a stress so you can write in terms of force as px or p which is nothing but a force is equals to stress into area you can write so area of uh, so first of all we are calculating px means uh, force perpendicular to this bc so it is a sigma x into stress into area is area of uh, this bc so here first of all we are taking uh, a unit uh, cross section uniform uh, member and of unit cross section such that we can write uh, bc into 1 so here 1 represents we have taken unit cross section member so that is the uh, one uh, bc into 1 so suppose if you take this one dimension and uh, one is other dimension so stress into area so this is the uh, load value because of this stress so this stress can be resolved into two components and uh, by simplifying that we can find out the uh, normal and uh, tangential that is uh, shear stress on this oblique section so before that uh, friends you are uh, new to my channel please subscribe to my channel and uh, activate bell symbol for more videos and also please share my videos with your friends and also please follow our channel on facebook for uh, this i am giving the link in the description so here i told uh, our aim is to find out normal and shear stresses on this oblique section and i told theta is the angle made by this oblique section fc with the uh, cross section or with this bc or ef also you can take so px is the normal force this uh, to this uh, bc and it, it will be some angle with this fc so if you resolve this px so this is resolved into two perpendicular components one is perpendicular to this uh, fc that we are taking as a pn so pn is a perpendicular force to this fc and pt is a tangential force along with fc so we have to find out uh, sigma n and sigma t that is uh, sigma n is the normal uh, stress on this section fc and uh, sigma t is the tangential or shear stress on this fc that we have to find out so i told here uh, we have taken a rectangular member of uniform cross section area and unit thickness and sigma x or sigma anything that is a normal stress acting and also we have taken sigma n as a normal stress on the fc uh, pn is a load and uh, we have to find out sigma n and we have to find out sigma t shear stress or tangential stress we have to find out and i told theta is the angle made by this oblique section with this uh, B, uh, bc or ef that is a perpendicular or a cross section so to find out sigma n so that is sigma n is nothing but uh, 
normal uh, stress on this public section FC. So it is a stress you can write load by area. So because it is a normal stress, so we have to take force normal or perpendicular to this FC and area of this section FC. So we know that uh, Pn is the normal uh, force or perpendicular to this section FC. So we have to take uh, in the place of force we have to take Pn and area of the section FC. So area of section FC is nothing but FC into 1 because we have taken uh, unit cross section member. So we will get FC into 1. So we can write Pn as a Px cos theta. Why? Because if you see we have taken Px is the uh, normal force and it will be some angle with this uh, Fc. So you can resolve this Px into two components that is perpendicular component Px cos theta and, uh, and this along with Fc that is uh, Px sin theta. So this uh, perpendicular component to this Fc we have taken Pn and uh, the component along with this uh, Fc we have taken Pt such that uh, this Pn will become Px cos theta. So why because so if you take if you we have taken this is theta angle here and if this is theta here, here also this, this is theta so why because so if you see this is 90 total is 90 between this uh, uh, pt or pn or if you take uh, between this uh, fc and pn it is 90 and if you take uh, this total is 90 and uh, if you take this is uh, no this is 90 minus theta this will become and uh, or, or if you observe this uh, triangle, if this is theta, this is 90 minus theta. Why? Because this is 90. So if this is 90 minus theta, this is theta from this diagram. So anyway, you can say that uh, this Pn is nothing but Px cos theta. Why? Because it is an adjacent component. So Pn is nothing but Px cos theta. Pt will become Px sin theta. So that's what we have written here. In the place of Pn, we can write a Px cos theta. Once again, Px we can write sigma x into Bc into 1. So in the place of Pn, we can write Px cos theta. And in the, in the place of Px cos theta, directly I have written sigma x Bc into 1. So 1 into Bc is nothing but Bc only and cos theta. So once again, I will tell in the place of Pn, we have written Px cos theta. And in the place of Px, I have written sigma x Bc and cos theta as it is and Fc. So, and if you see, uh, again we can write sigma x into bc by fc into cos theta like that we, we can write and uh, from this triangle if you see bc by fc is nothing but cos theta if you observe this triangle fbc and if you write cos theta we know cos theta is nothing but adjacent by hypotenuse and in this triangle fbc this is the adjacent bc and the hypotenuse is fc so cos theta you can write bc by fc so in the place of cos theta or in the place of bc by fc we can write cos theta so bc by fc we have written cos theta and cos theta one more cos theta is there and this cos theta into cos theta cos square theta so sigma n we can write as a sigma x cos square theta so the normal stress in terms of this uh, direct stress as a sigma n is equal to sigma x into cos theta so if you write in general you can write sigma into cos square theta also in the place of x sigma x you can write directly sigma one notation is only sigma uh, into cos square theta also and uh, we have to find out tangential uh, stress so this tangential stress is nothing but shear stress so this i told this pt is a tangential force acting along this uh, uh, fc so that we can write this pt as px sin theta i have told so if you require tangential uh, stress force means uh, stress along this fc we have to take force along fc by area of cross section stress is equal to load by area so stress along fc means force along fc by area of cross section fc so force along fc we have taken this is a pt so pt by cross section of fc is fc into one unit cross section we have taken so pt i told we can write px into sin theta into fc into one so once again we can I told Px we can write sigma x into Bc into 1. We have we have seen Px as sigma x into Bc into 1. So in the place of Px we have written sigma x into Bc into 1 and in the sin theta as it is and by Fc. And already we have seen Bc by Fc as a cos theta we have seen. So in the place of Bc by Fc we can write cos theta and sin theta as it is. This is 1 into is 1 is uh, Bc into 1 is Bc only. So, so we can write sigma x into cos theta into sin theta. Just multiply and divide this uh, with the uh, such that uh, 
here uh, multiply with 2 here and divide 2 means here so why because so we can write this as a 2 sin theta cos theta and once again that is can be written as sin 2 theta so the shear stress we can write sigma t as sigma x by 2 into sin theta so if you take in the place of sigma x only sigma as a notation you can write sigma by 2 into sin 2 theta so this is the expression for normal and uh, shear stress of a member subjected to direct stress only in one direction so from this normal uh, stress expression sigma x or sigma into cos square theta so in this case we have taken sigma x into cos square theta so this is a normal stress so if you want the maximum value of this sigma in so for maximum value of sigma in this uh, cos square theta or cos theta should be maximum so we know cos theta is maximum when theta is 0 degrees so when it is 0 cos 0 we know 1 so in the place of here if you uh, substitute 0 0 means here if you see so when theta is 0 fc will coincide with the bc or ef so we see uh, so that means uh, the plane normal to the axis of loading will carry maximum normal stress so we have seen when theta is 0 this fc will coincide with bc or ef so so what we are doing we are finding out the maximum normal stress means the plane which is uh, perpendicular to this direct stress will uh, have the maximum uh, normal stress value that we have seen so we can write here sigma n is equal to sigma x uh, cos square theta in the, in, the, in the place of theta if you write 0 so cos square 0 it is 1 so simply sigma n the maximum value of sigma n is nothing but sigma x that is nothing but applied uh, uh, stress that is sigma so there is a maximum value of for this uh, sigma n and if you see tangential stress the expression is sigma x by 2 sin 2 theta or sigma by 2 sin 2 theta if you take in the place of sigma x sigma is notation so so for that uh, tangential stress should be maximum this sin 2 theta should 2 theta should be maximum so this sin 2 theta is maximum when 2 theta is uh, uh, 90 degrees or 270 degrees why because uh, sin 90 is 1 that is maximum value so so when 2 theta is 90 or 270 the theta value will be 45 or 135 so this means that uh, the shear stress will be maximum on two planes inclined at 45 degrees and 135 degrees to the normal section that is EF and BC so that you can uh, indicate here so the value of maximum shear stress or the plane on which maximum shear stress will happen is the theta is when theta is 45 degrees uh, that is FC should make 45 degrees so such that means the plane which is 45 degrees with this uh, normal uh, cross section or with this BC or EF so there you will get uh, uh, maximum shear stress plane that is the first plane and second plane will be at uh, 135 degrees with this uh, BC if you see so this is the one more plane so this is this will make 135 degrees if you see so it, if you count it is a uh, 90 and plus uh, 45 135 so these are the first plane of maximum shear stress when theta is 45 degrees and the second plane of maximum shear stress when theta is 135 degrees and uh, these are the uh, expression for uh, normal and uh, shear stresses and this is the planes showing the maximum shear stress so for more videos please subscribe and activate bell symbol and also please share it with your friends thanks for watching